exciting uh, beta launch of the Genius Insights. I have Ryan Williams. I know you're all really excited to hear from him. We're going to be talking about this program, which has uh, some incredible new developments in frequency and in assessment. And I think you're going to be really blown away by the information we talk about today. I'm super excited about it. We're going to do a sample session for you. And when you see some of the testing features and the frequency generation and the sound potential, I just think you're going to be happy that you joined us today. So with that, let me turn it over to Ryan and uh, we'll sort of go back and forth with questions. And um, Ryan, are you there? I am. Uh, absolutely. And thank you so much. And for those of you that have joined us on a Friday, um, a, heart well, a heartfelt thank you. Um, I know everyone's time is busy. Uh, what I would like to do today is, um, it's 10 o'clock, I'm hoping to keep everything under an hour. Uh, with uh, looking at uh, some of the attendees that have joined us, we've got some people that have literally not even actually used an app similar to this before, which in many ways is actually great because, uh, you know, one of the benefits with having a beta test group that's so rich and diverse, you know, not only as existing users that are familiar with this technology, but to actually have new users that are not familiar with this technology at all. Um, it gives us some really good, you know, feedback both from existing users and then obviously new people coming into the industry. However, with that said, um, it does open a bit of a, a sort of Pandora's box in a way in terms of, you know, how do we cover all the information to be able to satisfy those people that are still very new to this kind of technology and then equally be able to educate you know, existing users that are familiar with this technology. So with that said, um, I'm going to do my best. If you do have any questions, um, as you can see on that GoToWebinar um, dashboard on your right-hand side, um, just go ahead and then look for the question area there, and then you can go ahead and type in your questions, and if they're nice questions, um, we'll answer them. If they're not nice questions, we probably won't. <laughs> okay, so... First and foremost, thank you all of you to volunteer to be a beta tester. Um, in terms of any specific questions or any specific feedback that you have, um, you can just go ahead and send me an email with the things that you are enjoying, the things that uh, some of you are actually not enjoying. However, what I would suggest um, is there have been some crashes in the past. However, it's because there was a prior version and since installing over that prior version, it will by default create a, lot, create a lot more crashes. So what I do ask you moving forward um, is we will be releasing a new version um, probably tomorrow or latest on Monday. Before you install that version, just make sure you actually delete your previous version um, and then do a fresh installation. Um, and then you should actually find that you'll be good to go and you'll have very few crashes. We have set up a really cool sort of crash analytics where we can actually track these crashes much more efficiently, you know, um, essentially. So from that side, it's all good. But anyway, moving on. In a brief nutshell, the way this technology works, it's both, it has the ability to analyze the human body and then it has the ability to actually balance the human body. So the manner in which we analyze it um, is either through a voice analysis um, and or through a picture analysis. Um, as we get to those two pages, I will explain to you some of the things that we've done to actually improve um, the efficacy of the actual voice analysis. Um, uh, some of the research I've been doing uh, over the last six months has actually been uh, pretty exciting, and I hope that uh, you know, as I can go through this program, I can you know, share some of the insights uh, that I've had over the uh, last six months. So first and foremost, the Genius Insight app, it is pretty much a cloud-based app. In other words, all of your data is now going to be stored on the cloud indefinitely. Your data is tied to your email address. It's tied to a 128-bit secure, and secure encrypted server. So in other words, nobody can actually access your personal data. What that means for you is that if you have an iPad and an iPhone and maybe you lose your iPad or you lose your iPhone or you get a new device or anything along those lines, you can basically enter in your email and your associated Genius Insights app and you will have all of your information there including your libraries, 
as well as all of your client files. As an existing user, you are able to import all of your client files and all of your client database through Dropbox. So in other words, as long as you have backed up your database to Dropbox once before, the first time you install this, you'll be prompted and you will have the ability to import all of that data over into the uh, new app. So just to emphasize, we are actually moving away from Dropbox completely. It's a cloud-based process, which means that everything is automatically saved all the time. Now, what that means from, from our side, actually, is that as we begin to get more and more users with the access to the cloud is that we can begin to collate data. Um, in terms of doing ongoing continuing research, um, it's, going to be, it's going to allow us to basically populate data according to certain demographics. So to give you an idea, uh, let's say we want to um, pull data from all females that are being tested between the ages of 18 to 25. We will be able to set up those parameters and then we will be able to see by means of a, a splatter graph how those results are actually looking. What it means from your side is once you've got all of your clientele loaded in, you will be able to actually plot the, uh, this kind of data by means of uh, scatter graphs as well. So if you've got you, uh, you know, maybe 50 ladies between the ages of 18 and you know, 25, you can actually put up data for each and every panel and you can begin to look at common trends for those specific, uh, you know, for that specific uh, sort of data. We don't have that yet, however, we have the cloud-based server, we have everything set up and we actually are currently working on that now. So moving forward to the actual app, um, if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and click on your access client records, please. So here is basically where you would enter in your client name. Um, here we can see we've got, you know, a, a one or two clients. If you click on the view past results, please, this is where you can access um, all of the past results of your clients. So as you can see, you know, we're looking here at the respective dates. Every single page that you access um, during that session, it basically memorizes it, it saves it to the cloud. So essentially at any one time, you can go back and you can review um, all of your um, past data with, uh, with each and every client. Um, just go ahead and click on the continue with new analysis on the bottom, please. Um, okay, while we, okay, great. Um, just go ahead and click on record, please. So there's a few things here that, uh, that we've developed and we've, you know, sort of made enhancements to. The first thing is that if any of you do a lot of long distance sessions, um, I know in the past what we've had to do is um, have people either call in um, and then you record the voice accordingly. However, you now have an ability where anybody can actually email you um, a WAV file, you know, they can actually email you an audio file of their voice. Um, and then on the, all right, and then if we get back to that, back to that recording page. Um, okay, let me just put in Annette's information. We'll get Annette to record her voice and then we'll get her picture up. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, just another question. I've got a, um, a question here about how do you approve the, the um, untrusted enterprise developer license? First of all, this is only applicable to iOS devices, F, um, iPhone, iPad, iPad Pro, and then an iPod. It will not work on a Mac device or anything like that. Um, so these are specifically for uh, mobile devices. Um, so in order to be able to approve that profile, you would click on your settings icon, and then you'd go down to general, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom where you will either see one of two items. Either uh, you'll see um, device management or you will see profiles. Select that and then you will see a Canada Inc. Um, profile and you go ahead and then you trust that profile. Okay, let me just show it really quickly, Ryan, because other people might be like, oh my God, what is he talking about? So it, you just go to settings, you go to general, you go to device management. Oh, it's not now. It's not broadcasting. Um, let me just see if I can switch it up, and then we'll uh, continue. Obviously, continue on. Uh, all right. You know what? I can send people some screenshots of that. 
and show them what to do. I don't know why it's stopped broadcasting for the moment. Okay, so can we get to the can we get to the audio screen? Yeah. Um, you know what, Ryan? Keep talking. Keep answering questions because the reflector okay, has stopped. So let me just see if I can get it. Yeah. Okay. So there's a, a few other questions here. Can you use this with people via Skype uh, worldwide? Yes. Um, what I would like to do is uh, just t uh, I take you back to that uh, back to that voice page. Um, and once we get there, uh, I'll I'll just go through it. But some of the changes that we've made is you know first and foremost. It allows you the ability where you can actually upload a, a WAV file. That's the first thing to bear in mind. The second thing is that, you know, what we wanted to do is show you or give you a bit more um, of an indication in terms of the way the actual voice analysis works. Um, and if you have a look at that radial graph that you've got on the bottom and then the, and then the dominant frequencies on the left-hand side, those dominant frequencies um, in some ways are, are the sort of, they're the main frequencies of that specific voice file. Um, those dominant frequencies are called, you know, are like formants. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of, of sort of different words that you can use for them. Formants, um, acoustical resonance, uh, predominant frequencies, etc. But those are the frequencies that comprise a large part of the actual voice analysis component. However, what is actually really cool about those formants um, is that we actually use them to create a a voice to voice balancing tone uh, generation technology. So basically, we use a sort of symmetric mirror composition of the voice formants as a harmonizing sound. So I know this is a bit much to take in, but you know, basically, we've got a really cool program where we can take somebody's voice. We run it through these various algorithms, and it takes the voice, and then it converts it to not only the predominant frequencies, but then we create a voice-to-voice -voice balancing tone generation. The reason why I'm telling you this is for two parts. The first part, it's always good to do that before you actually start with the session. And then the second part is you can actually use that component to create, um, to create sort of neurological remedies. In other words, you can actually talk into the app for up to one minute. It takes that audio recording, your actual voice audio recording, it turns it into a series of harmonizing frequencies, and then you can use that as an actual remedy for your client. That's one thing you can do. The second thing you can um, uh, do is actually have your client talk into the app as well, and it repeats that exact same process, and then it can play those balancing frequencies back into your client. Totally new feature we have. If it sounds like Greek, don't worry, it's much easier to use. If I'm giving you too much technical information, please just let me know on the on the sort of chat function, you know, on the on the questions. Because I'm just, you know, going with you know with what I know and if it's too much, I certainly do apologize. Um, Ariel, how are we doing on a screen? I would keep talking. <laughs> I'm still yeah, I'm still just trying to adjust it. But I, I should, ha I should have it up in just a couple of minutes. You know what, that'll actually keep us out of mischief. So, you know what, hopefully those of you that do have the app up in front of you, just go ahead and we'll actually work through the app, you know, on the on the actual, we'll work through your, through each and every app. So, when you get to that, that voice analysis page, the voice harmonics on the bottom left-hand side, where you've got that little radio button, okay, so just a reminder, get to the voice analysis page. Um, once you've spoken into the app for uh, for the 15 seconds, what is advisable? And this sort of sets the it sets the stage for the session. It opens up your client's energy centers. You click on the voice harmonics, and you get your client to listen to that for anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds. If you have the geo harness, you can certainly have them. Um, they don't need to listen to the actual audio tones. They can just apply the actual geo harness as well. Um, so then uh, let's just move on to the, um, I guess just on a side note, uh, what we do with the, uh, with the picture analysis, uh, so we've discussed uh, the, uh, the voice analysis, and really the voice analysis, it probably makes up about you know, 95 to 98% of the actual analysis uh, capabilities. When it comes to the actual image, 
um, we are generating radionic rates and tones from the respective uh, from the respective image, um, and then we are converting those to a harmonic chord. So that's how those two analysis components work. So let's just go ahead and get to the main system overview page. And once you're at that page, click on the begin analysis, please. So there's something else that we, yes. Did you want to switch the view? Do you have any of those um, up to show on your side? Because if you, if you do, that's totally fine. Um, you know, I might have screenshots. Bear with me. Let me see if I can find some. Hang on. But Ryan, I think the important thing to remember is about the voice is that it's verifying and verifying and verifying, running through several different paces so that it's actually more reliable than voice analysis has been previously. Yeah, absolutely. And I was, um, can you, yeah, yeah, let me actually, let me touch on that now. Um, and let me see if I can find some images. Just around to secondary schools. Yeah, I don't even have any good screenshots yet. I'd, I'd feel comfortable sharing. I'll tell let's you just, what, just let's, just keep, let's just keep talking about um, some of the features, and then I'll just keep working on this, Ryan, and we can continue to take yeah, questions. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, just close as many different apps as you can uh, running in the background, and then... Yeah, um, I think that's what will do it. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Okay. So one of the fundamental breakthroughs that we've actually done with the voice analysis, and just a reminder, if you are on the uh, system overview page, um, uh, what we used to do in the past is that, you know, we'd take the voice analysis and we'd apply the voice analysis program and we'd basically do like a sort of single pass or a single run through of all of the different items. Whereas what we're doing now, we are actually repeating that test anywhere from 300 to 500 times and we're looking for redundancies and we're looking for patterns because you know the reality is I mean voice analysis is not it is not a perfect science and I certainly don't make any claims accordingly however if we could take the voice analysis program that we've got and run that test multiple multiple times between 300 and 500 over a period of time there you know you begin to find redundancies and then you begin to find actually repeating patterns and it's those repeating patterns etc that we are then looking at um, so in my opinion it's just a major you know sort of advances that we've made in, in, in terms of the way that, that we've actually done the analysis okay so with that said hopefully you've clicked on the uh, on the begin analysis button on the uh, system overview page the next thing I'd like you to do almost immediately is tap on the bio field and do a begin analysis and then go back one step so you back to the system overview tap on the mind and do a begin analysis and then go down and then tap on the body and do a begin analysis so basically what we're doing here is that as you can see, you know, when we do this begin analysis, you'll see the, the images and the, and the, the line graph, etc., cetera, um, are busy flashing on and off. While it may look cool, really what we're trying to do is to give an indication um, in terms of the multiple tests or the multiple passes um, that, that, um, that we are doing to actually yield the results. So now if you go back to the system overview, at a quick glance, you immediately have a pretty good overview of your client's main issues. So the first thing that we've done is, you know, we decided to break everything up into three main different fields, the bio field, the mind, and then the body. So what we're trying to do during this program is take everything, you know, everything that might be, you know, probable, and then we're trying to look at what might be possible and then we're trying to move into a stage of, I, I don't want to say certainty, 
but we want to somehow get down to a deeper stage of investigation. So really, in looking at this program here, within the first two, three, four minutes, it's yielding information about the client that we may find beneficial. Um, in other words, if we look at the bio field, um, it shows your reaction from zero to a hundred. Um, sorry, not from zero to a hundred, I apologize. I think from zero to about 800. Um, obviously, the higher numbers are the numbers that you should be looking at, and then equally, the uh, lower numbers that you should be um, exploring as well. So, to, um, so anyway, so okay, I'm hoping everyone is still sort of uh, following on. Can we give voice again? Um, not visible. On my... Okay, so I'm, I'm just quizzing. I'm just squizzing through the um, through the questions here. So just as a reminder, those of you that may have joined uh, that may have uh, joined us recently, uh, we're just having some technical issues with the. Uh, I got it back. I got it back. Oh yay! Oh, I was All beginning right. to go nice and sort of flush there. So um, glad that's changed. Oops. Okay. okay um, can I run this app on my PC laptop? No, you can't. You can't. Can't. Um, it is only designed for iOS devices, um, iPad, iPhone, and then obviously all different Android tablets as well. So you know, really, what I've done over the last six months, I've I've basically rewritten this app from this app from the ground up. Um, I just felt it was getting to a point that I wanted something fresh. I wanted something new, and to really start you know, from the ground up, it really allowed us to make a lot of the fundamental changes that we have um, and just really, you know, just start with something new, with something fresh. Okay, so as, as you can see, the four man's here are showed in the, on the bottom left hand side and then that little icon there on the bottom left showing you the voice harmonics um, is what I was discussing with you. And we just have our volunteer, Annette, kindly uh, donating a picture here. So we're going to begin the scan here. And we didn't get to record her voice, but we're just trying to move along with the, <laughs> move along with well, the demonstration. She didn't have to donate her kidney or anything like that. So, Annette, thank you very much for that. <laughs> all right. Okay, Ryan, let's, uh, this is where all oh, of the okay. excitement starts. Okay. So personalized uh, energetic signature, this is a... This is an advanced form of uh, hololinguistics that we use. So just go ahead and click on yes and just type in a positive based affirmation there. Um, I actually will tap on to what to some of the changes that we've done with the hololinguistics. And again, um, for those of you that do have any questions or comments, if you'd like to email me, um, my email address is um, rw at, and then all one word, quantumhealthapps.com. Um, rw at quantumhealthapps.com. So go ahead and click on the begin analysis, please, Ariel. Okay, so as you can see, basically what we're doing here, um, okay, just click cancel there. Don't click okay, yeah, perfect. Okay, so this is a new program. We've got some bugs here, but anyway. Okay, so what this is doing immediately is that it's showing us in terms of the biofield, the body, and the mind, that right now the biofield is showing the highest level of our, of our probability. But now as you can see, all three of these are in, in a yellow. So you know, typically this is indicative of, you know, this, this doesn't seem to be such an actual major issue. But when we are actually doing the testing, and what is critical to understand is that we are analyzing these three fields against one another as well. Okay, so in other words, when we are testing here with the mind or the body or the biofield, we are not just running a scan on that. We are running a scan on all of the items within the body, but we are we are we are interfacing it or or correlating it against the biofield as well as the mind as well. So um, Ariel, just click on biofield and do a begin analysis, and then body do a begin analysis and mind, just so we can come back to this page, please, with a breakdown. And just click, always click cancel. Oh, cancel, okay. Yeah, because if you click OK, you end up going back to the client records page. Absolutely, okay. So now we've brought them all in to. Okay, the... so go down, go down and then do body, please. 
And then, so we're going to scan all of the body and then bring all of those items then back into the main analysis. Yes. And we're going to do the same thing now. We're going to go down. So now we have all of those prioritized items have been chosen, brought into the main analysis. And now we can go down and do the same thing for mind. And again, just real easy. It just sort of shouts at you here, begin analysis at the bottom. You know what to do instantly. And again, we're going to bring those into the main analysis. Okay, so if we have a quick view here, you know, because you know, really part of the part of my part of my research over the last six months, you know, was looking at existing technology and saying, well, you know what, I look at what's out there and let's find a way where we can actually empower the practitioner or empower the actual user more and give them more definitive information. Part of the challenge that I had, you know, that I've had personally with the other apps that I've developed is that you know, at the end of the session, it's, it's very difficult to know, you know, when you've got to the end of the session because you've got all these different panels and in some ways they sort of isolated from one another. They're not really integrated into one another. So you look at this sort of compartmentalized piece of information um, and I just felt it was really difficult to try and find a way where you could take this compart compartmentalized piece of information and actually tie, you know, tie it in together that within a 25 to 45 minute session, you can then go back to your clients and say, okay, you've got this, 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 this is what we've done, this is what you need to take, and then off you go. So with that said, with that said, I, my goal with this is to help any new user download this app and do a session with, within, and I kid you not, within five or 10 minutes. And I'm gonna give you some ideas how I feel that is possible. Obviously, as a practitioner, you will be spending more time because you will be doing more balancing. Um, as a practitioner, you will be spending more time because you'll be doing more consultation and obviously you will be doing a, a deeper analysis. But what I'm hoping is that through some of these features I can actually touch on, um, I can give you an idea in terms of a new user, how they can literally jump on and do a quick five or ten minute session, get a quick overview of themselves and then they can you know, jump off and then basically off they go. So, Ryan, when you do this, you're basically bringing back from that subcategory all of the priorities from that subcategory into the main analysis. Exactly, yeah. So, right now, we can now look at the biofield and we can look at the high, and we can look at the items of our probability as it relates to the biofield and then down to the body and then to the mind as well. Now, you know, it's important to look at this information and not. Um, again, it's important to look at this information and not take it as sort of verbatim information. To me, it is important as a user, as a clinician, as a practitioner, to take this information and to combine it with the clinical context that you have of your client. In other words, you want to look at this information and then relate it to your client, relate it to what they're telling you, relate it to their physiology, their tests that they've done, and then come up with an overall package. Um, you know, it's, it's always important, in my opinion, to, to factor in, A, you know, why the client, you know, why the client is even coming to you in the first place. Because typically, you know, if you know why they're coming to you, and then if you begin to look at this information, you can relate that, you know, to the actual clinical context. And that ties into the wellness markers that we had right in the beginning. Those wellness markers don't influence the results of data in any way. But what they do, and what I was hoping, and I'm hoping they do, is they will give you, um, as a practitioner, you know, the ability to see what the main areas um, of focus are uh, for the client. So, Ariel, in the meantime, let's just go ahead and drag maybe two or three of each item of the mind, body, and biofield down into the main hole tray, if you wouldn't mind. Absolutely. Now, when you drag this time, you're going to have to hold it. If anybody's been having an issue with this, do you need to hold the item for at least two seconds in order to drag it? When you do drag it down, and I don't see it happening this time, um, we should be getting a code, right, that says that it's been dragged successfully, like sure. that. 
Yeah. And so you, it does, once you get used to this, you guys, it will be very, very easy to do this drag and drop. It, the best thing is to go all the way to the left, let your fingers sort of connect for a couple of seconds, and then this becomes really second nature. It's really just learning a new technique. Now we have them all down in the main hold tray, Ryan. Perfect. Okay, let's just leave it there in the meantime. Um, so on that drag and hold feature, we actually came up with a really cool idea last night. So um, we found a phenomenal way to actually improve that. So, you know, you know, I mean, the cool thing with this is, you know, this is in a beta version, but I can assure you, Every week we're going to be releasing new updates uh, with new features, etc. Okay, so if you have a look at this page, in the top we've got a quick zap function, and then in the bottom we've got a main hold tray. So the quick zap function is designed for you to balance specific items on each and every page. Okay, and um, so what you can do here is that, you know, let's say you've reviewed this information and you can see that right now food sensitivities indicate the highest probability for this client. So you want to go ahead and drag those items up there and then um, Ariel if you just go ahead and move that down to one minute and then click start please. You can leave a few in there. So basically the quick zap is literally to provide a quick electrical or a quick signal stimulation on this specific page. Your main hold tray is a really cool new feature and we're going to have a, um, some major advancements going on with this new hold tray. The hold tray is all, it's, it's just what it is, it's a hold tray. So in other words, while you are navigating through the entire program and you are finding items that correlate to the client's overall global picture of their health, you just drag all of those items down down into the whole tray. So as you're navigating through the different panels, oh, you know what, this relates, this relates, this relates. You just drag them all into the main whole tray. And what that's doing, it's going to basically co collate all of the information related to your client. So once we have that information, then we can do some really cool things, which we will actually get to, um, we will get to shortly. So as you can see, once the signal stimulation is complete, on the bottom there it'll give you an overall percentage success rate. You can remove that by just actually tapping on it. Just tap on it. Perfect. Okay. So, so we're back to this page. Um, <coughs> so the other cool feature that we've got, Errol, if you can just click on the actual text uh, system overview as well, please. Absolutely. You guys, this is the most exciting feature that I personally um, I was absolutely blown away by, and we just tap up at system overview, and Ryan, take it away. Okay, perfect, yeah. So what we've done is to try to make it a bit easier as well, um, just click on the begin analysis, um, is we've provided you with a complete listing um, of every single item in the main database. That This doesn't include the entangled insights, but basically throughout the app, I think I think we've got about 38 different panels now. So through this, you can do a global scan, and in a space of a few seconds, you can find the highest priorities as well as the indicating lowest priorities as well. We've put some color coding in to try to give you a quick little snapshot. So as you can see, everything related to body is blue, everything related to the biofield is purple, and then everything related to the mind would be in red. So there's two things that you can do with this. The first thing is that you can just scroll through quickly and see what the dominant color is. You know, that may, that may be beneficial to you. Or alternatively, you can look at the, at the highest items and then the lowest items, and then you can do a further analysis. You can do a further analysis in, in one of two ways. You can either just drag those items down into the, multi -hole, into the main um, hole tray, or what you can do, you can actually do entangled insights. Um, Ryan, let's first uh, show them, if I can just yeah. bump, jump in there, let's first show them the, um, I want to show them entangled insights, but if this is so cool, you guys, what you can do is everything that's in what was formerly called the multi-layer, which is now the main hold tray, when you actually go and click right here, which would normally be the play button, um, look what happens. It actually will prioritize everything in that hold tray. And then it will go through a progressive balancing when you choose to balance it for the time you had previously allotted in that previous um, screen that you saw. And you play this here, 
it is now balancing um, at a priority. Everything that's on top is getting more attention and more balancing. And then, is that right, Ryan? And then everything that is really shown to be a lower priority will get less balancing. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you touched on this. So, um, you know, first and foremost, uh, part of the challenge, you know, as I mentioned, was trying to find a way where we could bring all of the data from all of the panels together. And the progressive insights is basically what achieves that. So in other words, you know, we can go through the, the meridians, the risks, the, the allergies, the mind, the bio, you know, anything and everything. We build the global picture up, you know, of the client through that whole tray. Once we've got the global picture of the client, we then come here, we would then run the scan, um, and then it basically shows the interrelationship and interdependence of each and every one of these items against one another. So in other words, what this is showing us right now is that the Nogier uh, frequencies have a high level of, pr of probability, you know, versus if you go down to the bottom, uh, to the mind. So it's saying, it's saying, you know what, we now need to focus on the uh, Nogier frequencies, or in this case, you know, maybe the uh, other chakra frequencies. From here, we can do one of two things. Um, the first thing is that when we begin playing the actual uh, balancing frequencies, Think of it as a time, um, basically it's exactly what Ariel said, you know, the items that are low we spend, you know, time on, the items that are medium we spend time plus one, and the items that are high we spend, you know, time plus two. So basically the items that are high get three times as much signal, signal stimulation versus the items that are on the very low. Um, so to you know, as I mentioned to you earlier, part of the goal here is to give somebody the ability to do a complete analysis in five or ten minutes. And to me, by looking at that um, at that system overview, by looking at the mind, body, biofield, dragging all those items, you know, into into the main whole tray, running a scan, boom, you're done. You've now done a session. You've got a pretty good overview of your client. That's great. So where are we going with this? We've got a whole bunch of more analysis features and capabilities but um, you know even in terms of, of of sort of where we are right now with the ability to help you correlate and interrelate everything to one another um, to me is really sort of dear to my heart or close to my heart or whatever it may be so with that um, do you want to if we could just pull up the entangled insights sure, as absolutely, well absolutely absolutely so we just simply swipe you actually let's do this if you don't oh, mind um, yeah, I apologize. Sure. Go back to the main whole tray, if you can. Oh, main whole tray, okay. Okay. So just to add some sort of fuel or conceptual ideas behind the quick analysis capability, once we're at the main whole tray, is this, no, it's not, is it? No. You want me to go back to the main screen? Or, yeah, the main whole tray is down here. To the main whole tree, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to go down to the, um, sorry, where the, where you compare all of the, uh, yeah, yeah. in the progressive insights. Okay, got it. Okay. Go ahead and click on, on okay. So <clears throat> that's the first level of analysis, right? Now, today's stress is coming up uh, super high. Well, you know what? I can go ahead, I can click play, but okay, you know, great. But maybe I want to know what's going on with today's stress. So let's go ahead and open up the entangled insights, please. Want to tell um, everybody that's a yeah that's a quick whoops that's a quick um, swipe from left, from left to right okay know. yeah okay, great okay so now hang on Errol don't type anything do you see where it says they show all tap here oh that's yeah. cool yeah perfect okay, tap on that for me okay and then tap all for me let's see if this works this is a new feature we put in. okay perfect then go ahead and click on check. I love that, right. Ryan. Okay. That is so cool. That is absolutely okay. smashing. Smashing, darling. Okay, so what we've got now is we've now looked at today's stress, and we now want to see what is entangled, what is associated with today's stress. In other words, you know, as a user, as a practitioner, I want to know why today's stress is coming up high. And as we can see, when we run a scan, I think we have about 1,800, maybe 2,000 items in the Entangled Insights database, and then we run a scan through each and every one, and then it'll show your highest to the lowest. What we can do here, Ariel, oh, okay, now this is a prime example. It's giving me here 
a 1% probability. Okay, so really what this is telling, well, I guess it's actually super low, I need to pay attention to that as well. But, you know, so typically if it's super low or super high, it's giving me a high percent probability that there is an interrelationship of these items with today's stress. If it had to come in at around, you know, 50% or 40% or 60%, well, it's sort of neither here nor there. Um, and as much as what today's stress is showing up, there's no correlation to the actual entangled insight. So I can, you know, basically, for, you know, forget about that. And then when I do the balancing, um, just go ahead and uncheck today's stress, please. I can go ahead and I can uncheck today's stress. Because really what I've done now, I've said, you know what, as much as what this is coming up as a, as a high probability, when I try and look for entangled or sort of interrelated items, it doesn't actually give me anything. So therefore, this is probably one of those sort of false positive results. So I can just go ahead and ignore it. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's a question here. I didn't see where I could tap with entangled insights. Um, do you just want to repeat that? Pro just yeah, show them how you get different, maybe. Insights. Yeah, let's try the Star of Bethlehem. So what I'm doing here is I'm swiping from left to right, um, I think, or right. I'm just... I'm swiping to the right, so that's what happens. And then you can bring up anything in the database, same as cross-analysis, by typing in here. Or I really like you can test the entire database through this button right here. And then we just go all, and it'll run through all of the items in the database. Okay, so Ryan, uh, this is much better. This is a 65%. So this particular flower essence is showing a relationship to, say, muscles relaxing, um, which is a great correlation. Okay, so then what you can do in that instance, you drag those items. You can do one of two things. Either drag them to the quick zap and give it a quick zap, or if you want to actually drag these items into the whole tray, and then do another analysis and see the interrelationship of those items against everything, you can do, you, you can do that as well. Okay. And I think it's great to keep bringing things into the uh, main hold tray. There's no downside because it allows you to continue to sort of shape and shift what the prioritization is, which is something we were never able to do before. Absolutely. I think the I think the whole tray is certainly one of the most important things. You know, if in doubt, drag it. That's my... <laughs> that's <laughs> That'll be my new mantra. Um, okay, Ariel. At this stage, you know, if you wouldn't mind, uh, for some of the new users, I'm sure you, I'm sure some of this might even seem Greek. But Ariel, could you just go back to the system overview and just go through some of the, you know, sort of deeper pages that we have? Go back to the general overview, or the no. Go back to the okay. The general overview is where we've got a list of okay. Yeah. So from the system overview, is just maybe show them how we can drill down deeper and uh, drill down deeper, please. Uh, well, we've so got the, uh, certainly we've got the body system. So we've got a tremendous amount of body systems in here that we've never really had such really awesome panels. We've got food sensitivities. We've got hormones. We're going to maybe look at a few of these. For example, um, let's just look at hormones. And again, very, very simple. You notice that the time it takes to scan is lightning fast. And it's going to give these all to you in prioritization. We're going to hit cancel here. Just to stop the animation, um, if you have something that you don't like, there's a button right here. We just tap on stop the animation. And then this tells us instantly what are the most important hormones that are out of balance. We can now take those and put those down in the, in the whole tray. And we can go also to the lowest numbers and include those as well. Not a surprise to see cortisol really for anybody having to... Um, you know, deal with stress and so forth. So we've got herbs, chemical sensitivities, digestion, essential oils, current infections is a great one. So there is just a tremendous amount more of relevant panels in here that are included in the program that really make a great difference. These are the things that you've been wanting to look at. Um, and I think this will make the program even better for you to drill down information, get to root cause and help people to balance. Perfect. Okay. So with that said, what I'd like to do is just draw your attention to a few things. First of all, um, in the top right-hand corner, we have the main navigation. Um, Ariel, just go ahead and click on the, on the main navigation there. Okay. 
So as you can see, if at any time, you know, as you navigate through the program, if you want to get back to the starting point, that would be your system overview. Okay. Secondly, um, just click on the um, click on the on the extra modules if if you wouldn't mind. Sure. So part of the inspiration with you know basically rebuilding this app from app from scratch <coughs> is to try to find a way where we could actually declutter the actual app that you're looking at, you know the actual screen. So part of it is you know we created the drop up and the drop down for the the quick zap tray and then the multi hold the multi um, the main hold tray. And then the other thing we decided to do was to take out the the MEP, the synergistics, and then the response assessment, and create it and put it under these modules. So essentially, you know, as we develop um, new and unique modules, the the ultimate goal is to have them listed underneath here, versus making the screen seem more cluttered. Because you know, essentially, the more cluttered the screen is, the more stress it puts on your eye, the more confusion, you know, the more sort of confused the more confusion sets in, and that's what we would like to um, avoid. So the MEP is known as the uh, toggle switch. So that is in the same process, you know, when you have items dragged in the uh, quick zap tray as well as um, in, the, um, in the main hold tray, you would use the MEP, stands for multi-element phase, and it'll toggle the, fr the signal stimulation from the top tray down to the bottom tray. Um, I think in all fairness, you know, as we begin to develop the main hold tray, um, we're going to be incorporating uh, different, you know, zone interferences, different psychogenic factors, et cetera, et cetera, into that, into that main hold tray. I think with time, the MEP will become more and more redundant. Um, next is the synergistics. If you just go ahead and uh, tap on that. Ryan, let me just ask a quick question about this. Yeah. So do you activate the MEP every time you want to run a multi-element phase? or will it stay on for the whole program? So you preset it up and then you come back, you do this and then you run one session of MEP? Yeah, good question. Okay, so the most important thing to do with the MEP is that before you actually get to the MEP, you need to make sure you have items that have been dragged into the quick zap tray as well as into the main hold tray. And then you can come here and then you would set your timer and then you're off to the races. So let's actually just walk through that. Um, just go back a step, please. Okay, so just drag an item up to the quick zap. Okay, and then just set it down for a minute, perfect. And then go down to the main hold tray and just maybe change that to two minutes. <coughs> Smashing, okay, oh, one minute, doesn't matter. Okay, then let's go back to the um, whatever it is that I said. What was it? The uh, extra, modules. extra modules. Okay. Yep. And then click on MEP. And then here, yeah, just set your timer down to let's say five minutes, as an example. Oh wait, hang on. We've got a cool new feature as well. For the MEP, you can add a holo linguistic support. In other words, let's say there's a specific emotion that you want to focus on, or something along those lines. You can go ahead and type it up here as well. Um, it uses that holo linguistics I was telling you about, and it superimposes itself as a as an energetic signature on top of your actual signal stimulation as well. Okay, great. Okay, so then you just say, okay, the synergistics. Let's just go ahead and tap on that quick. You know, we've got about ten. More. Okay, so synergistics again. If you want to test, um, basically, this is um, the you know the ability to test compatibility of certain herbs or supplements or anything along those lines against your clients. So we'll just type in vitamin C and this is the um, biocompatibility sort of corollary. Yeah. But um, okay. I think you've and done you things to improve it. Yeah. Well, you know what, essentially, yeah. And I mean, I mean, you know, as I said, part of the cool thing about this is we came out with this whole new sort of, um, the new voice analysis, I'm calling it a sort of voice threshold testing. Because what I mean by threshold is that, you know, we're testing it multiple times and we, we're sort of putting it under a lot more stress and we're looking for that, we're sort of looking for that, like, like sort of, uh, that, like, threshold. Just on a side note, I'm getting a few messages here. People are saying that, you know, I don't have this, I can't see this, and I can't see that. 
Um, this is a new program that we got this morning. There's a few bugs about it that I don't like, um, but we're working over the weekend, so come Monday, you know, what you're looking at here, if you are missing one or two items, um, you will certainly have access to that come uh, Monday as well. Um, does it work with other people speaking other languages? Yes, absolutely. Um, I actually have a cool document on that. Um, in a, the short answer is yes. Um, Ariel, just go, just go back, please, and then let's have a look at the, um, I think, the response is it. So for this, it would be sort of um, not very much for mind, obviously complete for body, that type of thing. Yes. And you know what? What I want to be clear here is that this is not saying whether it's a good or bad for you. It, I don't believe technology has the ability to be so sort of black and white. What this is giving you an indication or a probability is that in which quadrant of the body it's going to have the most benefits and in which quadrant of the body it's going to have the least benefits. That's okay, fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. I think it's much clearer. It's much easier to look at. It's much easier to understand. It's a nice, clean layout in this. Um, okay, so let's just go back one more step, please. And then the response assessment. Do you want to say anything about that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the response assessment is pretty cool. So basically, you know, which, okay, so we're at, I'm not too sure which page we're at, but we're at this page where we've got, you know, these items. Now, let's say you want to do a retest if somebody was taking a vitamin or a homeopathic or essential oil or buckfly remedy. So go ahead and just type uh, something in there, please, Ariel. Just do vitamin C again. So where do, where are these items coming from? Is this from a previous scan, or why has it randomly picked these? This was, this was from the previous page that, that we were at. So okay, I'm sure, okay. I'm not sure what this page was. But basically, whatever page you are at, when you go to the um, – let's go ahead and, and uh, check all those items, please. Um, basically, whatever page we were at, all of the extra modules will be relative to that specific page. So now we're basically running a response assessment to see how the body would improve or perhaps not if they had or if they were taking vitamin C. So as you can see, they'll, you know, um, the biofilm and bacteria will be decreased, parasites will be an increase and decrease, and then respectively an increase as well. So the number to the left is the before; the number to the right is the after effect. Absolutely. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Really, it had the great. It had the best effect on the virus. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so let's go back now, please. This is fantastic. Really, really fun, fun features. Way easier to use. Cleaner layout. It's really, really fantastic. Okay, let's go back to. The, okay, go back to the navigation, please. Now it's a real bummer because we're coming up to eleven here, and there's just such a ton well, I'd love think, to show you. I think you. people would be willing to stick around, Ryan, unless you have to fly at the top of the hour. I think people are pretty psyched about it and um, you know this is going to be recorded so people can come back so can we go a little bit extra time absolutely, yeah, absolutely. you know what I'm a, you know what I'm having a blast so yeah cool okay, okay. cool today Valentine says yes she can stay and Lilius and I, okay you know what sold let's stay okay cool let's go to the neuro remedy then so we'll just go through down you know we'll go down these one at a time so the neuro remedy is what I was telling you about that sort of voice to voice harmonics um, on that initial screen where we do the um, uh, where we do the actual voice analysis. So what you can do here with a neuro remedy is basically one of two things. You can either create your own personalized voice recordings which convert it to the voice to voice harmonic frequency or alternatively your client you can actually do a voice recording of your client for for one minute and then you can actually play that recording back back to them as well. So to show you how to do that, um, Ariel, just in the top right hand corner where we've got the plus sign, just go ahead and click on the plus sign. So you know, like as an example, maybe you want to read a, gosh, I don't know. Let's say there's a there's maybe a scripture just, as an example. Or how about just the just ohm? Oh, ohm. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and click on the yep. Yeah, click OK. So now, as you can see, you've got the uh, voice record on the on the bottom left. Go ahead and click on your on your record, please. Om, om, 
Om. We can stop it after five seconds or a minute or anything like that. So <laughs> just go ahead and stop, okay? No offense to your voice. It's a very lovely voice. Um, <laughs> so now let's do another recording as well. Okay. Okay, and again, no offense to your voice. But now let's say, for example, you want to record maybe an audio of... Uh, I don't know, maybe somebody chanting, maybe a group of monks chanting Om, or you want to record a, um, a symphony or anything like that, basically any audio. You could be playing audio and you can, okay, click OK, and then click record, and then you can actually go ahead and then you can record the audio accordingly as well. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, you could record. You could record um, didgeridoo. You could record drumming. You could do nature sounds. You could do your own. I mean, really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, for those of you that that you know, I mean, part, part of the inspiration behind this is that you know you could find you know certain affirmations, certain manifestations. You know, if you are religious or depending on your sort of you know your path. You could read, you know, spiritual, you know, statement or spiritual manifestations, or you could read, you know, scripture statements. You could take, you know, church songs or anything along those lines. You load them all in here, and then on the bottom there, you've got begin analysis. So just go ahead and click on uh, begin analysis, please. You know, Ryan, you could even do whole linguistics in terms of like heal liver or anything that you want to shape and shift uh, through the power Absolutely. of your voice. So. Okay, let's go ahead and do get an analysis. Yeah. And just to be clear, I actually want to give Dr. James a lot of credit for this. He was part of the inspiration behind this. Um, so, you know, Dr. James, I know you're not here, but thank you. Okay, so you get these two. So what do people do next once they have these here? Okay, um, you, you would set your timer. So that little yellow thing, yep, just, and then click on play. Click on play of the original one? Yeah, of the, of the arm as an oh, example. Okay, okay. And then this actually converts that audio to a sort of harmonic sound, and then off you go. Um, Ariel, to actually just click start, and then to delete this, to delete those items, yep. um, swipe right to left, I believe. Yep. Yeah, there we go. And then just click on that. Perfect. Okay. Let's click on the... Okay, so this, this opens up a whole new Pandora's box as well. We're just sort of, you know, touching on the tips of the iceberg here, but... You know, hopefully this will give you an idea. And that is thrilling. No, that's okay. totally, totally exciting. Do should we do okay. the frequency, the the um, different sound forms? Absolutely. And also that I'm just going to do the one thing that when people open it, they'll want to do is go ahead and tap right here, where it says download enhanced layering technology the first time that you're using the program. As we do the updates, you may need to go back and do this again if you delete the app. So just know that you just simply hit the button again, and then all of those files will be downloaded. Ryan, I have to run outside to take care of the landscape, guys. So I'm going to let you riff on this, and I'll be back in two minutes. Okay? No problem. Okay, okay. cool. This okay. So this feature here is is really a, a little pet a little pet project of mine. I, I really enjoy doing it. So first and foremost, we've got the wave intensity, which is really just about the power. I mean, nothing's really changed there. You can increase the wave intensity. We have the solid tone or the stacked wave, which is what the majority of you use. Fine, no problem. We've got the harmonic wave, which is a different formula, but it's still generating the same kinds of, of waves. All that is good. However, what we decided to do and what we figured out we could do um, is actually create different wave forms. So at the moment, we've got the sine, the square, and then the sawtooth, and then an alternating waveform. So Part of my, and again, you know, this is, I don't know if there's much research regarding this, but this is part of my, my logic or my understanding, and um, if you don't agree with this, I certainly respect that, but nonetheless, you know, it might be worth trying. Um, typically, the, typically, the body is a lot more responsive um, to receiving square wave frequencies and then sometimes sine wave frequencies as well. However, it's my belief that that the body is always in a constant change of dynamic. Well, that's actually not my belief. That's just fact. So, you know, the body is always in a constant change of dynamic. Um, the body likes change. You know, as a, re a really good example is that if you are taking a supplement 
you know, the same supplement for a year or even six months, eventually those supplements are rendered useless. Part of the reason why they are rendered useless is because A, your body, you know, builds up, you know, the necessary needs to the supplement perhaps, but typically the body gets used to those supplements and this is why it's good to change your supplement regime. So in the same way, I actually believe it's great to actually change the different wave shapes that are going into the body. So it's my suggestion to you um, is to select the alternating waveform. What that means is that according to the items that you have selected, um, so basically every single time we are running an actual balancing session, we are looking at the items that you are selecting, we are looking at the actual voice analysis, and then we are alternating between the sine wave the square wave and then the sawtooth wave as well. So to me, you know, the body likes change. We keep on mixing up the different signal generations and typically that should actually penetrate or those frequencies should actually hold with the body a lot longer. Um, can we test which type of wave the body actually wants? No, we can't at the moment, um, but that's a, that's a great idea. But at the moment now we can't, no. Now, the other cool thing that we have is the stack soliton tone, st stack soliton tone, and then the energy encoded process. Now, um, stack soliton tone is this little sliding bar over here that you are looking at. You know, nothing has really changed. Um, oh gosh, I'm I'm trying to move it. I realize I don't have control of the mouse. Um, the other process that we have is the energy encoded process. Now that is actually going to be changed to um, archetype encoding. Um, those of you that are familiar with hololinguistics, um, this is a derivative of uh, hololinguistics, but really we've taken hololinguistics to just, in my opinion, to a sort of whole nother level. We've made some really cool, cal you know, because hopefully most of you are familiar with, uh, with the word hololinguistics. Those of you that are not, it's basically taking the power of a word and converting it to an actual frequency. Basically, our archetype encoding, um, in some ways, it can be thought of um, like as a translation um, of an experience which is generated by a phenomenon um, into a set of audio symbols. You know what, I've got a document that we've actually written on archetype encoding. So those of you that want to get a bit more um, of a deeper understanding about the archetype encoding process and you know how we actually use it, please just email me. My email address is ryan at quantumhealthapps.com. Yeah. However, yeah. To, to, Oh, Ryan, I'm so back. But just, yeah, did no. you, you talked about the alternating energies. Yes, I did, and we're now okay. on the on the we're on the archetype encoding process, which is basically the hololinguistics, which is right now called the energy encoded process. Okay. But I'm actually going to give I'm actually going to give you a real good example of how hololinguistics work, or how you know, um, um, yeah, basically how that would work. You know, as an example, let's say that that you listen to music, all right. So music is not words. Music is an expression. It's an expression that's made by a band or a group or an individual. Now, if you close your eyes and you listen just to the music, and music is just, it's just frequencies, it's just audio tones, through nonverbal communication, that music will impact you. If it's healing music, it's going to impact you. If it's like dark, aggressive, heavy metal music, that will impact you. If it's, you know, a melody, that music will impact you. Nobody is actually saying anything. You are experiencing something on a sort of non-verbal level. You are experiencing frequencies on a non-verbal level. And in some ways, we've taken that conceptual idea and we've incorporated that into the um, energy encoded process. The cool thing about the energy encoded process as well is that it actually takes the frequencies and it makes them sound, in my opinion, much more pleasant to the ears. Um, I think you will really enjoy the actual 
sounds of the archetype encoding process. So Ariel, just go yes. ahead and click on that energy encoded process. So in other words, if you want to activate that, you would just tap on the energy encoded process. Yep, it's on. Okay. It's on, yeah. That's perfect. So that's the first step. <laughs> the second thing that we've got is the um, enhanced layering technology. Now this um, this is just way cool. Okay, so one of them, let me give you some history. When we first came out with our first app, we came out with a single tone generator. In other words, let's say we were going to generate 528 hertz. The sound would go beep, beep, 528 hertz. I mean, you know, it's great, it was fine. Um, we then made a major revolutionary breakthrough and we came out with what's known as a soliton wave, which is like a stacked wave. What that means is that we took that 528 hertz and we broke it up, um, and we broke it up into six, I think, yeah, into six different amplitudes, okay? So the soliton or the stacked wave had, um, it, was, it could penetrate the body much deeper. Really awesome. No complaints. Still a great, it's fantastic. But then, with this new app, what we figured is that we could actually almost create different, um, different layers of audio to all play at the same time. So as an example, let's say we, you know, just imagine if you've got like three different iPods around you and if you push play on a different song or a different frequency on all three iPods at the same time, you are going to be stimulated or you are going to hear, you know, three different songs at the same time. What we're able to do is create a, a process whereby we could actually create that sort of layering process within the actual app. And hence the enhanced layering technology process was was conceptualized or created. What that means is that it comprises of a series of, um, of binaural beats, isochronic tones, um, sacred energetic symbols, and um, specific frequencies and melodies. These now play over and top of the actual normal frequencies that you hear. So what does that mean to you? In the past, you have your typical standard soliton wave, you hear beep, 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 beep all, those, all those different things. Now, you know, in all fairness, um, those frequencies, I, I never really enjoyed listening to them, um, but nonetheless, you could always actually, you know, sort of dial it down so you can't actually hear the frequencies and they are still going to have an impact. But what you can do now, you can, and Errol, if you can just slide that, that energy encoded process down to like 50% and then the enhanced layering technology up to 100%. So does it have to be a balance like that if you, if you move no, one? No, no, no. Okay, okay. okay. You can, okay. No, you can be really, really whatever you want. You can even take the energy encoded process, you know, down to like, 10 or 15 percent and those signals those soliton waves are still going to be you know sort of generating but then what you are going to hear with the enhanced layering technology you are going to hear the isochronic tones the melodies the sacred energetic signatures and the frequencies that's going to be the dominant audio that you can hear and it's a lot more appealing it's like yummy really, noise yeah it really is. It really is so what that means for you is this actually opens up another cool paradigm as well, is that when your client has the geo harness attached to them, you can actually still use the geo harness, but you can now go out and get a really cool set of sort of a of like headphones, um, and you can actually have them listen to these brain entrainment, isochronic tones and binaural beats as well, which is going to basically stimulate the the balancing um, to a much on a much sort of deeper level as well. So, and you could get a splitter. You could use like a Belkin Rockstar. You could have them with geos on, and then with a really sophisticated set of headphones with really good sound. And you're really going to knock their socks off with the um, with the results that you're going to get as a res from using this. Okay, um, Pam Manis, Pam Manis is going to go and jump from an airplane. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, cool, if you're into skydiving, all the power to you. I hope you weren't like that other gentleman that, um, that did that, that free fall from like 20,000 feet or something. Absolutely insane. I was just going to get anyway. a sample if we can hear those tones, Ryan. Okay, I don't, I don't know if, well, maybe just try to turn it up. I mean, if we can, that would be great. Can you hear them oh, from, you. yeah.
Well, you guys who have the beta test, you can play around with this, but you're going to find that these are um, much, much more palatable tones. And uh, especially with a really good set of headphones, you'll be blown away by them. Perfect. Okay. So let's go back to the... Um... Um, let's go back to the navigation as well. Sure. Within the frequency tape. Okay. The data research. Um, that's what I was mentioning to you uh, uh, early on about the uh, about the about the actual scatter graph. So you know that is ultimately where we're going. We don't have it set up yet, but um, that'll be integrated probably in the next sort of six to about eight weeks. Um, okay. Let's go to the libraries, please. Absolutely. Okay. So the libraries are basically your Customized panels. Oh, you know what? Um, before we do this, um, if you get bored and you like to text message, um, and Ariel loves to get everyone's text message. <laughs> between There's a chat, a chat feature up, 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 up right here. Yeah. There is a chat feature up there. Errol, don't click on it now. It's fine. But there's basically a, a chat feature up there, and the idea behind that is that, you know, A, you can reach out to your fellow friends that are using the app. Um, you, can sit, you can share screenshots. Um, I'm on this pretty much. 24-7, um, so if you're stuck with technical support or something like that, uh, just uh, just look for me and, you know, hit me up and ask me a question and I'll do my best to answer. So, with that said, how's everyone feeling? Is it, like, can I just get some feedback? Uh, what are your thoughts about this app in the meantime? Well, you're getting a um, lot of good feedback. People really do like the new features from what I've um, sort of read through here. There's just... Um, People just chatting about bugs, but no, people love it. Fantastic, love it. They're we're excited to stay for the extra time. Love it from Ball. Fantastic, love that from Lilius. What a great app from Linda Ray. The app looks cool, amazing banana. from Sophie. Yeah, great app. Looking forward to using it, Magdalena. Okay, awesome. Okay, so so far so good. So the libraries, what we've done is we've made a couple of really cool, really fun changes. However, there's one little caveat that's, that is important to remember. The first thing is when you get to your main system overview, before you click on the begin analysis, you need to come to the libraries and add the libraries to your clients. Um, and that, if you look on the bottom of this page, it'll say add to client. Um, and I'll just click on that and see if we actually have anything or if, or if we could do that. Okay, perfect. So now, you know, we've got one library here added. Just select that and then click OK. And then let's go back to the system overview page. So basically what you can do now, which is which is really, really awesome, um, see if the libraries are down there. I don't know if it'll show now. Can we go back to the, oh, we don't want to go back to the beginning. Um, I don't know why it's not bringing it through. I don't, yeah, I don't see it right now. You know what, it's because we've already done the scan, I believe. Um, okay. See, and this is one important thing you do need to remember is that before we click on the begin analysis, if you you know if you have libraries added, you want to go to the libraries and then just add the specific libraries that you want to your you know to your, to your clients. So let's just go back to the libraries, please. Okay. Okay. Um. So <clears throat> a few options. Let's say you want to create your own library. Um. So your library, you know, can comprise of either frequencies or it can comprise of uh, hololinguistic signatures as well. So click on your plus sign. Okay. Um, your category picture, you can either tap there and you can upload a picture. Um, Ariel, just create a category name, please. No, oh, it's not a... There we go. So, for, uh, so for those of you that need to that need to uh, get going, um, hopefully we'll have this recorded and we will gladly send it out to each and every one of you that uh, that attended. Okay. Okay. Just go ahead and click on save. Okay. Perfect. Um, so we've got their flower and flower essences. <coughs> go ahead and tap on that for us, please. So. Basically, we can create the library. Now we want to add the individual items. So, if we look down, the, if we look down on the bottom there, it says individual items. Um, did I just create a new category again, or if you click uh, no, here? No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Click on the flower essences, and then go down, and then to the right where it says zero items. Okay, click on flower essences, 
Now look on the bottom there where it says items. And oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Before you begin, do you want to add individual items to your category library? Yeah. So go ahead and click OK. So now this is where we add the individual items. So, you know, just, yeah. Yeah. And what do we do here? OK, so now here we've got two options. Um, the first thing is that let's say you have specific frequencies that you want to add. Um, you can click on Add there next to Frequencies. It's giving me the screen. Um, add, OK, just go ahead and just click on the Add. OK, just type in there, um, you know, 120. Click OK. OK, perfect. OK, so I'm not too sure why it comes up there with export. But basically, here we've got two options. We can either add an individual frequency, so for example, Ra frequencies or Hilda Clark frequencies or anything along those lines. Or the other thing we can actually do is a, um, a, a frequency sweep. So just click on, on the Add there, please, Ariel. Yeah, absolutely. So now what we can do here is let's say you want to generate a frequency sweep from 100 hertz to 150, or from 50 hertz to maybe 75 hertz. Go ahead and click OK, and then 75 and click OK. OK, can we just scroll to the bottom here? Is there anything here on the bottom of the page? No, OK. Yeah. So go ahead and in the top there, click on Save. Okay, so what we've done now for Aspen, we've created a single frequency and then we've created that frequency sweep from 50 to 75 hertz. So now when we actually apply that as an item, it's going to generate that, that individual frequency number and then it will generate the actual sweep. So in other words, it'll go from 50 hertz to 51 hertz to 52 to 53 to 54, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's cool. So that's the first one. Okay, the next part is that if you actually want to create, uh, create uh, like hololinguistic or mm -hmm. archetype encoded uh, categories, right. uh, click on the add manually for me in the bottom there, Ariel. Yep. Okay, add, add item name and then just add an item name. I think it's here. Okay, let's just go back one, please. Um, and then click on import, actually. Sorry. You know, we, we built this a while ago. I actually haven't really... Okay. Um, it's all like sort of foreign to me. So okay. put it in this way. Yes. And then do we put in the zero, zero, 001 or we don't do that at all? You know what? You actually don't need to do that. And then click on the import now. So that doesn't require it being connected to the tray. It will default to like a whole linguistic without anything exactly. connected. Okay, that's great. Oh, that's cool. Okay, that's fantastic. It makes everything easier. Okay, there's a question here. Can you control the length of a time a sweep takes? You know, you can't really control the length of a time of the, well, you can, you, okay, you can control the length of a time sweep by when you actually decide to stimulate the body with that specific item, you can just adjust the time accordingly. But as an example, let's say you've got two or three different sweeps and four or five different frequencies for one item. When you adjust that sweep, or when you adjust the timer, um, the timer is going to impact you know, all of those items. It can't, so in other words, you can't say, well, for sweep one, I want it to be three minutes, and sweep two, I want it to be five minutes. We are busy exploring that, but frankly, it's just a whole bunch of more programming uh, that we've had to look at, and you know, it will be done, just not in the in the near in the near future. Okay, so we've got that. Go ahead and click on on back, please, Ariel. Sure. So the other, you know, the biggest, and then back one more time. So the biggest challenge that we've had, you know, with the customized libraries, et cetera, et cetera, was this whole Dropbox issue. And I'm certainly not pointing fingers at anyone at all, but it's you know quite often you'll get an e or I'll get an email, Ryan. I've my Dropbox isn't this, my Dropbox isn't that. So we've actually moved away from from the whole sort of Dropbox concept. Everything is now stored on a server, which makes the ability to share your customized library 
in absolute breeze. Okay, so the first thing is, um, let's say, you know, Ariel wants to export these two libraries to somebody. Ariel, on the bottom there, just go ahead and click on um, export, please. Okay. <coughs> um, now all I have to do is, hi, is really type in a user's email address and it, it, who, somebody who's a registered user, I'll be able to send this to them instantly. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and do that. Do uh, quantumliferion at gmail.com as an example. Now, people are spe sending in a lot of really specific questions. And I just want everybody to know we're going to be doing a lot of training videos over the next few weeks. So you're going to have lots of opportunities to learn this really, really well. And this was just to show you the features to get you super excited about it. And, um, you know, you might want to start sharing it with your friends and letting other people know about it. And if you do, we'd really, really appreciate that. So just go ahead and hit export. Uh, yeah, please. Library shared. Please check your email box. Oh, that's a nice, delightful spelling. Success. Anyway. <laughs> no comments on my spelling. Um, anyway, so basically what would happen then is I would then get an email saying, hey, Ryan, Dr. Ariel you know, shared a, um, a panel with you. This is the code. And then I would go to this page and I would click on, so let's just, I don't, I don't think this will work, but click on the, on the import there, Ariel. Sure. Um, you know, there's no way this would actually work. Um, but this, anyway, it's anyway. going to be a key. Yeah. It's much like the Quanta capsule. There's going to be a key that it's going to be a thousand times easier than the previous um, iteration of all the 16 digits and getting your code and everything. So we'll go over more, but it's much, much easier. And of course, you're going to have your database and all of your sessions saved. So the interaction with the cloud is incredible. And what Ryan's done with this is going to make things so much more efficient. A number one question that people have is, do you need to be connected with the internet 100% of the time now? And the answer is no. Just for imports and for if you want something saved, then yes, you are going to have to be connected to the internet, but not necessarily to do a session. Is that right, Ryan? That is absolutely correct, for sure. So le I think we should just say it with the, with the, unless I, you know, there's anything else you want to say, but I think we should just make, maybe make the offer for people, what they, how they can get this and how they can share it. Um, you know, good question. You know, in some ways it, it is in, in a beta version. However, you know, we've already got a bunch of, of people that have been using it. Um, everyone's super excited. Um, in terms of the pricing in that uh, for it, I'll be real candid with you. I haven't really settled on um, anything yet. Um, but the first and foremost, what we are looking for is for more and more beta testers. So if you have the app and if you are a beta tester, you know, just bear with us over the next two or three days. You know, we'll certainly reach out to you and, you know, figure out a way to make it work for you. If you are interested in becoming a beta tester, go ahead and uh, shoot me an email. I'll send you the new download links and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll sort of take it from there. Um, you know, it, it's super exciting. It's taken about six months to get to, you know, to get to where we are right now. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. And, you know, certainly we just want more and more people testing this. I've got to tell you, um, you know, since we started the beta testing, it's been really cool because two or three sort of core issues came up, you know, straight off the bat. And um, it's just, you know, it's like, I mean, we, I mean, you know, you can do it or I can do as much as what I can when I, you know, when you have a small group of, of uh, beta testers. But to me, the true strength of the, user interface and everything else, it lies when you've got a whole bunch of people that are actually doing the testing. So, you know, that's all I can say at the moment. Um, my, my email address again is um, rw at quantumhealthapps.com. So go ahead and shoot me an email on that um, and then we'll get you up and running um, with the beta testing. Just on the side note, there is a question. Once, the most important thing for you if you are an existing user is to make sure your Dropbox is actually updated and you've backed up your data, you've backed up your database. As long as you've done that, come Monday, you will be able to import everything um, from your the from the infinity into the uh, into the genius. Exactly. Yeah. That's and then, exciting. Uh, that's exciting. Yeah. That's because their database and then their panels and so so on and so forth. Yeah. 
Well, that's cool. really, really exciting. Well, Ryan, what you've come up here is with is incredible. All of the new ways of balancing, all of the new sound frequencies. I know people are going to be really excited to be beta testers and then eventually become users. We're going to be having a whole new set of education on this. We're going to be having free weekly re webinars as we have in the past um, with the Infinity. And so um, you can be in touch with me as well to ask me questions. Obviously, be in touch with Ryan. I know we'll be following up by email as well. You know, I just got to tell you, I mean, like reading some of these questions, you know, we've got one lady which is busy jumping off a, off a plane. We've got another lady that's <laughs> 600 miles from Costa Rica diving with sharks. <laughs> got some exciting yeah. people using the, using the program. That's pretty cool. Life is peachy. Well, make sure you send us pictures. And uh, you know what, just to, in fact, I do have a few other questions and I can't remember what they were. But somebody had emailed me a bunch of questions beforehand. Um, you can do long distance sessions with this, yes. You can do group balancing, you know, absolutely. You can just do a, a, a picture analysis and um, I can't really remember the other items. But the, la the, the lady that sent me those emails actually will respond uh, uh, privately anyway. But for those of you that have attended, you know, blessings, thank you so much and, you know, love to get your feedback and continued feedback as well. So um, it's all good in the hood, I guess. And we'll get the recording out to people as soon as possible. Ryan, thank you so much and thanks for coming up with this. This is really cool stuff. Oh, you're great and thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Okay. Take Bye care now. everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend. Yeah.